Welcome to worship, brothers and sisters, at Our Shepherd. Uh, I am Pastor Matt, and this Sunday is Trinity Sunday, and so we will especially be praising our uh, triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in our worship and in our liturgy and in our sermon. And uh, specifically, we will continue the Keep Me This Day um, theme, focusing on Deliver Me From Evil. Let us continue with our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We continue with our opening hymn. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us have a moment of silence for us to reflect on our sinfulness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. 
we justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and it is for his sake that he has forgiven you all of your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of the word and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this one true faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. We continue with the reading of the Old Testament. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, 
and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called light day, and darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the heavens, and over the livestock, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. He said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the heavens, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the heavens, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with our epistle reading from Acts 2, 14 and 22 through 36. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David saying concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence by the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, he foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses." being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. 
They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Who of you have ever been anxious? Now, the next question is, maybe what does that mean? <laughs> you know, to be anxious means to, to worry about something that you can't control. Now, if we slow that down, to be anxious means to worry about something you can't control. Doesn't that seem a little silly? that we would worry about something we can't control. But here's the, here's the truth, friends. We still do it, because <laughs> we're silly sometimes, aren't we? Yeah, I know I am. I worry, and, uh, and, and I can be anxious a lot. It's, it's one of my weaknesses. Pastor Matt, uh, you know, my weakness, Pastor Matt's weakness is sometimes being anxious or, or worrying. But you know the one thing that gets me and that gets you through every day? Jesus. Jesus and his word. So whenever you feel, my friends, anxious or scared, or you feel like you're just, you want to go crawl un under your covers and never come out, just remember that, that Jesus is with you, that, that he, he takes your hand and he leads you, that not only has he forgiven you all of your sins, not only has he made you a child of God, his child and will take you to eternal life and resurrect you in the second coming. But he, promised to, he promises to be with you now, forever, especially when you're scared. Remember that Jesus is with you, right beside you, even more inside of you. Because Jesus lives inside of those who can declare Jesus as Lord, who have been baptized in his name. So remember, friends, you don't need to be worried. You don't need to fear. Jesus is always with you. Will you pray with me? Please uh, repeat after me. Say, Dear Jesus, I thank you for your promise to always be with me. Give me strength to always remember that you are with me, and I do not need to be afraid. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Blessings, friends. We'll see you again next Sunday.
grace and peace be to you all from our Heavenly Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. On this Holy Trinity Sunday, we continue our theme of keep me this day, specifically deliver me from evil, or uh, keep me from evil, right? And so we are going to focus in on our text from our Holy Gospel, Matthew uh, uh, 6, verse 25. And we're going to kind of walk through that and not only discover how the Trinity is in there, but, but how this applies to us as, I think, a very anxious people at times, and at least for me, a, long, a lot of the time. But I want to start with a story. As you heard in the children's message, uh, one of my weaknesses is uh, anxiety. Sometimes I get anxious and I worry for no reason. Um, this has been a, a lifelong weakness of mine. I've always had to battle it. I can remember back when I was uh, probably about my oldest age, about 10 years old, um, all the way until uh, middle school, you know, I would worry about everything. I remember worrying about being too hot. I thought, oh my word, I'm, I'm sick, I'm dying. I remember, um, uh, oh, I, remember, I always thought uh, I, I was going blind because I, I had really bad floaters and I had glasses at a very young age. So anytime I saw anything in my vision, I thought I was going blind. Uh, <laughs> Um, I, I worried about everything, and Lord have mercy on my mom who took me to the doctor. Who knows how much the doctor bills were, because <laughs> now as a father of four, I think, wow, my mom probably paid a, a, a handsome penny to take me to the doctor so many times. But I worried all the time. You know, there was a point where I would wash my hands so much just to make sure I wouldn't get sick or die that they would bleed because they would be so chapped and so dry from the water and the soap. When I read this text, all those childhood memories came flooding to my mind. Now, they weren't especially happy memories, but they were real. It made me reflect on my life today Hmm, I don't worry like that anymore. That's silly. Well, that would be nice, but my worries and anxieties have just changed. And I still have to battle with them every day. So, brothers and sisters, I want us, as we go into this text, to be open and honest with ourselves. Let God speak to us about our anxieties, about our worries and our fears, whatever they may be. Let us open our hearts now and let God speak to us. Because it hit me one day, you know, doubt is basically saying, God, I love you. I know you're my Lord. But you know, I'm not fully convinced that, you know, you're not going to keep me from this or keep me from that or protect me from this and that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this and 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 all right. You know, we try to take control of our lives when the reality is <laughs> we have zero control over our lives. And I think when we finally realize that, and we realize who has the control, it can bring a peace that is beyond understanding. Let us go into our text, verse 25. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. What you'll eat, what you'll drink, about your body, what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Jesus is making a point here. Listen, why do you worry? <laughs> you have to let the other shoe drop uh, in, in, this, in this story, right? Jesus is saying this because 
it is known that he loves them. He has told them many a times now, you know, I love you. He has showed them that in, 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 in the miracles that he's done. It's come. He's taught them the Lord's Prayer. And yet people worry. So Jesus wants to speak to that. Why do you worry? Can you control anything? And then again in verse 27... And which of you, being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Now, that's one of my favorites right there. Which one of you can add an hour to your life by worrying? Holy moly. If I can add an hour of life for every time I've worried about something, I would probably be like a thousand years old. (laughs) Uh, But that's the whole point. Jesus is saying this to, to, to take that point of ang- being anxious and worrying does not make your life any longer. It, it ain't going to make it shorter either. He ain't going to like punish you. But your life is your life and God has it in his hands, not yours. So don't worry about it. We go on then to verse 32. And 33, the Gentiles seek after these things. He goes, you know, the, 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 the quote-unquote outsiders, they worry about these things, and I give it to them. Why would you think I wouldn't give it to you, my people? He goes, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. And this is where it comes, comes together, where Jesus focuses his audience on what they need to do in light of anxiety and worrying and fear. He says this in verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What does that mean? When uh, Mark 1, 15, right? He says, repent and believe for the kingdom of God is near. It is in your midst. The time has been fulfilled. In other words, Jesus Christ. You see, Christ is telling them, seek first God and his righteousness, his rightness, his holiness, And all these things that you think you need to worry about, they will be added to you. God knows what you need. Not necessarily what you want, but what you need. And he will provide. But there's something more that he does for you. Because when you seek the kingdom of God, it goes without saying. It is by faith. Grace through faith. That God is bringing you to him. And this kingdom is eternal. What a gift we are reminded of here at the end of this story. Seek the kingdom of God. How? By grace through faith. By reading his word. By remembering the promises and the goodness of our Lord. That our heavenly father in the beginning, like we read in Genesis today, had a plan to save us from ourselves. He sent his son Jesus, and he gives us the power of his own spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise be to the Trinity. He has always had a plan to save us, and he reminds us in this text, through his son Jesus Christ, his own words, don't worry. I got you. Just seek me. Follow me. Everything's going to be all right. Because I promise. Lastly, brothers and sisters, in verse 34, Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious about itself. Sufficient for the day is its own troubles. 
we all have our own responsibilities in this life. We all have our own burdens also. We also have our own weaknesses, but yet we also have our strengths. But every day we must walk that walk and talk that talk, and that is the Holy Gospel. But God reminds us, don't get ahead of yourselves either. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just focus on today. Focus on following first the kingdom of God and the righteousness thereof of the Holy Trinity, of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He wants us to focus on Him. So as we live our lives, as we remember why we exist, which is to serve our neighbors, to expand the kingdom of God, let us remember that we do not need to do this with fear or anxiety or worrying because God will always supply what we need. And he especially will keep us unto the end. We know that death is not the end, but the beginning. So in all things, whether we live a long life or a short life or, or whatever, so be it. Brothers and sisters, I give you this challenge, and we end with this. Satan wants us to worry about our lives. He wants us to worry about everything there, thereof, right? He wants us to worry about how healthy we can be, our kids, how long we're going to live, how healthy we can be, how good we feel, how rich we are, what I drive, you name it. Let us do our best every day by the power of the Holy Spirit to give it to God. To remember that his will for us is to focus on his kingdom. And that we don't need to be afraid of fear. We don't need to be afraid of death. We don't need to be afraid of anxiety. All these things are nothing in Christ. So go in peace. Serve the Lord. You don't need to worry. He is with you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, three in one. Amen. At this time, brothers and sisters, we do continue with our offering. And I would just ask that uh, during this time you uh, continue to uh, give as you have been giving, uh, whether that be by envelope or going to our website and giving electronically. But in all these things, I thank you very much for continuing to tithe and give so generously so that we can continue to reach out to those in need here at Our Shepherd. If you would like to see other ways to reach out to others, just go to our website also and uh, look up the outreach uh, events coming up uh, are things that you can get involved with. But thank you so much for supporting the ministries here at Our Shepherd. Peace be with you all. Let us now continue with the confession of our creed and being it Holy Trinity Sunday, we will use the Athanasian Creed. We confess. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will without doubt perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. Such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, and the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. 
just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is Almighty, the Son Almighty, and the Holy Spirit Almighty. And yet there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there is not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also we prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords. The Father is not made nor created nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. The Holy Spirit is of the Father and of the Son, neither made nor created nor begotten, but proceeding. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another. None is greater or less than another. But the whole three persons are co-eternal with each other and co-equal, so that in all things, as has been stated above, the Trinity in unity and unity in Trinity is to be worshipped. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and he is man, born from the substance of his mother in this age. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One, however, not by the conversion of the divinity into flesh, but by the assumption of the humanity into God. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ, who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And at his coming, all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Great Triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, with reverent awe and adoration, we join the whole church in the song of the angels and saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. You were in the beginning, you are in the past and the present. You are forever. Eternal praise belongs to you. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we as your people praise you as the source of all blessings. In you we live and move and have our being. You, through your divine will, have provided a sacrifice for all of, all of our sins and opened to us the gates of paradise into the new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Lord, who is three in one, grant that I may ever and always accept the mysterious and most gracious gifts from your unerring word. Praise you, Father, for the blessings that continually come to me and all believers through the means of grace and from the privileges of my free adoption into the body of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world to fulfill all prophecy from the Old Testament. Jesus is Lord, our King, and it is because of your gracious will and his perfect obedience that we are now called your children through your spirit and baptism. Thank you, O triune God, for all you have done for us, past, present, and to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our family here at our shepherd at this time and lift up to you our prayers that, that have been brought forth as a family gathered around your word. Lord, we especially pray for Katie, Dorothy, T, Virginia, Pat, Anna, Lisa, John, Deb, Clay, and Jeff. Please, Father, answer their prayers according to your good and gracious will and keep them safe. We pray for all those who mourn. We pray for all those missionaries and persecuted Christians throughout the world. Keep them strong in the one true faith. Pray for all those who are imprisoned. May they have a chance to hear your word and to repent. We also pray for our military, especially our active military members, including Dominic, Caitlin, Dylan, and Rex. Father, we also praise you for those who have recently been baptized here at our Shepherd and brought into the family of God by the promises found in holy baptism. For Emily and Cole, for Clay, for Allison, Walker, Mason, and Lena. We praise you, Father, for their adoption into the kingdom. And we pray that you would continue to build their faith with your word so that they may continue to walk in that one true faith and fight the good fight along with their family. We praise you, Father, for this beautiful gift. Heavenly Father, we also take time now to pray for our country. There are so many people right now that are angry, especially, Father, over the death of George Floyd. We pray, Father, that you would grant that family peace in this very, in this very angry and, and mournful time. We pray that you would grant the whole family peace, that peace that's beyond understanding through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But Father, around this situation, there is so much hatred, so much anger, so much fear. Please, grant your spirit of healing and of peace, forgiveness, and reconciliation. Please protect the civil servants who are trying to um, control this situation and to try and help people be civil. Please, Father, heal our country in this time of so much hate and pain. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Father, we also pray continually for all the civil servants and the healthcare workers on the front lines of COVID-19. It would seem that things are getting better but we know that is still extremely dangerous for all those people who are healing the sick. It is because of their gifts and because of your protection, Father, that they've been able to uh, kind of curb the infections and, and, and allow people to go home. And those who continue to get sick, we pray, Father, that they would also be healed by the gifts given to these people. Please, Father, continue to bless the situation of COVID-19 pandemic not only in this country, but around the world. Continue to bless all of the health workers. Father, we, all, we now uh, pause for a time of silence for you to hear 
the petitions of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your love and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for worship here at Our Shepherd. I pray that it was a blessing to you. And please remember always that there's no reason to worry or to fear or to be anxious. God is always with you to the end of the age. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Praise be to God.